So yeah, this just goes into some of the um, versions of tabbing because there's a whole bunch of relationships of offsetting tabs so they don't hit each other and labeling. And one of the things that we are aiming to do, which I mentioned in passing earlier, is flatten out the fabrication process. Maybe you know simultaneously fab sets of these in shops locally uh, simultaneously. And one of the things we're after in our practice, as I'm, you know, we want to lower the bar on the um, labor side by using our information to the max, right? So if we're labeling these in a certain way and studying them in a certain way, that it's a natural um, process that someone's going to go through to, to assemble these. If you go to the next couple of slides, there's a um, let's hold there, I guess, but <coughs> I'll show you when we have the um, pictures of how we folded in our shop to um, to test and, for. And John, let me let me let me interrupt for a moment because there's a point there I want to make sure that everyone's catching here, which is you're actually talking about um, crowdsourcing the fabrication of these voxels um, and sort of this idea that if you develop um, a, uh, a simple and clear system uh, that you're going to get into right now. Um, that anybody, um, as you said uh, a couple of days ago, anybody could um, could take one of these things in their shop and fabricate one of them so that it, it didn't necessarily require one shop to fab everything, but you could do it in multiple shops all over you know, the region that you're in or something like that. Yeah. yeah, the perfect little sidebar story to that is we made a, for the gallery, we had a 3,000 square foot doubly curved uh, stainless steel. And, and the gallery is, is a different project uh, uh, that you, you did pre prior to this, right? But it had 30,000 connections, doubly curved surface. The spacing was like four to five inches on this um, web net. And we ended up getting that made uh, for $3,000, 10 cents a crimp, uh, because we gave them one to one rolled out templates of, you know, connect this dot to that dot, and then parsed it back into one bigger shell, you know. so. Anyhow, it's, it's something that we do all the time as far as our practice. And the next image, the one we're on now, you see the unrolling and the packing of the sheets as well. So we're talking about sheet size and who's going to be the you know person doing the laser cutting uh, early as well. So we're working back and forth. And then on the right of the top set of image, part of that image, you'll see some of the feedback that's from the uh, grasshopper model. So we're getting resultants of you know different... Yeah, if you zoom in on some of that, you'll see, uh, thanks, yeah, sidewalls, you know, top, total weight, and uh, length of line, sometimes relating the um, length of line of cut to the um, laser cut rate, you know, and um, yeah, so just some of the feedbacks that we get for every time we do a run. All right, you can Got go. Thanks. So these are versions more of the voxel using that um, circle packing, you know, the script. Then you can see some different versions. These are all relatively similar counts, but just uh, a pretty obvious expression of the difference of each one of them. And those are actual product. These aren't made up, you know, for for anything. These were out of our set. So. And this is when you're, you know, you're iterating on um, trying to figure out how to to. Uh, which materials you want to work with? Um, you're trying to figure out, you know, how to get the the number of voxels, uh, the the number of unique voxels down, so that you don't, you know, you have some, let's say, standardization or something like that. That's what you're representing here when these these uh, you know tend variations. Is that right? Is that fair? Yeah. If you look at the next image, uh, sorry, um, the one. The resultant that we ended up picking, basically, mm -hmm. you know, what you see is you're going to see the polygon geometry carry through all the way through to the tile. So, um, arrangement layout of these sets is going to impact the, um, you know, what we call the object state, the way this thing sits as a building in the in the landscape. You're going to see the patternization of these voxels. So these early studies weren't just looking top down. You're looking at them in perspective, you know in the model itself and moving around and taking a look at the way that these play with each other as you move through the site. We want them to have, so say, take the middle one, top side, that's so, you know, brindle looking or striped. It, that may play very differently in, um, in situ as opposed to how it looks right now planned down, right? So it looks like it's just some wacky little stripey guy, but 
really when you get in into the three dimensional domain you start to see this play against the um, you know the thickening of the sets you know 